Hello there, this is part two of Blank Canvas. And I'm Ev Kleiss, and I'm working on this painting that we started in part one of horses and its oil paint on a canvas. I've, um, on the first part of the program, I um, had the background in, I've sketched in the horses, mixed my paints, so it was like a composition idea, um, talking about these motion lines that are gonna be part of the composition in the painting. Now I've got some, uh, uh, quite a bit of paint mixed. It won't be enough probably for the whole picture, but I'm going to start laying in the paint, and that's painting it on and getting it onto the canvas and I'm gonna pick up a nice flat brush here, maybe this one here with a longer bristle. And I've mixed paints here that um, will be put on, I'm gonna do one horse with this, these shade, these colors, hues, color, uh, not shades, uh, but they're hues. So I'm used, for that I use the cadmium yellow uh, deep, and the cadmium red middle, and I'm going from, a, and a little bit of that wonderful earth color that I've talked about, the raw sienna. So I, I'm gonna go from this darker one to a middle value to a higher value, and it gives it more richness, I, I think. So we'll just wet the brush a little bit with some thinner, and I'm gonna lay this in. So. I've decided I will keep this dark line in the picture. And so rather than paint over that, I'm gonna paint up to it. So the paint is quite thick on my brush and I'm going to bump it up against the line because I want to, as I said, save it. Um, and I, that way I can also move it to clean that line. And I've picked up a little bit of that dark. So if I don't want that to show, I've got to wipe that off and come back here and push it back in. So we're at this point, it is a kind of a laying it on. And then, then once I get it there, I can brush like that. So I want this top part of the neck, um, it's gonna get lighter than that actually. This is the under, the, the darkest of those three colors. So I'm gonna lay some on here a little more. And then the middle shade, we'll see what happens now in the head, it's, oh, not too bit different, is it? Okay, I might have to come back and change that, but I wanna get that just so I know what I'm working with here. Now, it is a little different. It's not, that one's not as dark as I thought it was, the first one. This one definitely will show us a difference. So I'm gonna go along here now and get that lighter, the lightest value, the very brilliant got a lot of the yellow in it. Go right on top where I had the other one because I don't mind it sort of disappearing a little bit. I don't want it to necessarily look like a, a band of yellow right on the horse, but it's to look like it's the neck is higher, um, catching more light at this point. And then it comes out this way and then this little area down in here is going to be darker because that'll be where the neck goes in and there's a bit of a shadow there in, in natural. And we're, tap that in just so he gets some on his ear. Oops, I don't want that down there necessarily. So this can have quite a bit of this light color in it. Come here and then I'll blend that back now. Just let that go like that. The, the neck comes out here. There's a, like I said, there's a kind of a muscle that is there. So we're gonna put just the tip of my brush and get a bit of dark, darken that here. Pull it up to here and fill it in. I'm gonna cover that line. Sometimes that would be left to show that as though you could see through, but I don't want it there. Now, this is one of my really, this is the really dark. We're gonna go with quite a bit of contrast here because of that dark outline. So that's using the two colors that I mentioned earlier, the um, alizarin crimson and the burnt, the raw umber. The raw umber is the really dark brown and alizarin crimson and maybe some burnt sienna too because I don't want it to look completely black. So we're gonna put that black line back, his shoulder line there, and I'm gonna darken this again. Here, I want it a bit heavier, higher contrast. Sometimes if, if I wanted to get a heavier contrast, I would make this lighter, but sometimes if you make 
the other part darker, you don't have to make the, the highlight lighter. So it's, it, you can try both ways when you're, you're trying to get more contrast in your picture. Um, rather than saying, oh, I have to get darker and darker, maybe it means, no, you don't have to go darker, you might just go back to a lighter shade. Either way, experiment and see what's going to work. So I, I like this dark color. I'm going to get some of that in there just so it gives some real kick to the, the yellows that he's going to be. Now, another kind of a curved line here. We're going to repeat this. This creates a rhythm in the picture um, when you repeat sections or colors or uh, lines or shapes. So um, that's one of the elements of design is repetition, creating rhythm. And uh, now I, I want this part of his leg is going to be darker because it's in shadow underneath on the other side, on the, under the stomach. So that's the, the bend there. I don't want that just, I don't want it too black, but darker. There, we'll get in there. Now, um, that yellow is going to come back. It's going to show up again. I'm just wondering, as I work, sometimes these colors will be, I'll take them out into the other part so that it isn't just finishing the horse and then say, oh gosh, now I have to fill the background in. So sometimes you do it as you're, you're working. So I'm going to go back over here, give him a, some of this too. Uh, get a little bit while it's on my brush. Again, continuity, you don't want everything to be different, but you want variation. So a little repetition doesn't hurt it. Now, I'm going to come back because I still like this, I want to work with this yellow, and I'm going to pick up my palette knife here. Um, and a good palette knife, these are some older ones, but they're very good. Um, and if you take good care of it, they'll last a long time. Those belong to, like I was saying earlier, I used to paint out with my mom, which goes back 30, 40 years now. So some of these are hers, but the thin metal, and they've been kept so that they're flat. You have to clean them in between, otherwise they go all lumpy, the paint dries. So they mix better on your palette board than um, some of the new stuff that are made of plastic. So um, I wanted to get a lighter shade, that's what I want. I want this, a little difference between these two. There's not enough difference. So I'm going to put some more yellow. I guess I'll go into the middle one and put it so it's a bit lighter than that one, but not as light as the, the top note. And I'm going to use that raw sienna again here to darken this one. Just a hint more, and a little bit maybe of the burnt sienna, because I wanted, so burnt sienna, raw sienna. Burnt sienna is the reddish brown, raw sienna is the yellowy, more a, bit, a hint of yellow to it. Mustardy, dark mustard, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, let's try, I'm gonna leave that brush, because it's working good, but I don't wanna wash it and use a different one, so I'll come back to this one, keep that one for those colors. Now that might not be clean enough, let's just see. Might have to switch over, get me a new one. I don't want, um, it, it's really important to try to keep your brushes clean and in good shape or else you do get that scrubby look or uh, your colors get blended too, uh, together and they take on a muddy look. You'll still be able to see that they're different colors, but they have a kind of a, a blurred muddy look and I want them fresh and clean here. So I'm going to try, now that's more what I wanted that change. The, the tone, the value is a little darker than the other one, than the yellow. So that's going to go in there and in here. This is a very soft brush. And I can just glide the paint over if I've got enough either oil in the oil paint, because some oil paints are getting kind of dry. They won't have a lot of oil. They'll be kind of sticky. But then you can add the paint thinner. And I, I recommend to kind of try to find an odorless one, because otherwise you'd be choking on the, um, if it's too strong. And the paint thinner is what you use to clean it first, and then you wash your brush in soap afterwards, a nice, um, any kind of soap, just to keep it, the bristles soft and clean and back to their original shape. All of those uh, 
sort of caretaking things are important so that you can keep using your equipment and painting with it. Now I'm going to go back, take a touch of that bright yellow, put it on his face up here. And fill that. Just sometimes you want to leave it as a like that without blending it. Sometimes um, you want it to blend into the other part. So I drag it so that it blends in and you don't see the edge of where it was put on. But there I don't mind having it uh, left. Now his jawbone is here. Clarify that a little bit better. And a line there. And then his nose is here. Whoops, and I just smudged that outline. Um, messed it up a little bit there, I don't want that. So clean the brush better, put this down, pull this back to a point, and I can correct that. So to use your little finger as a um, prop there to get this back. I gotta go back again, because that's now mixing and it's getting a hint of green, which I don't want. So we're going to put that black dark line back in. My brush is going back to a nice point. I can get a finer line now. There we go. Got that back because I do want that outline to stay. Okay, ear. We're going to draw it in and I will correct that fuzzy stuff around it when I go to do the background. Now this one I'm going to put a sketch of an eye and then I'll decide later some of them you don't always put the eyes in, but kind of don't like them to not have an eye. But if I get it just that much, at least I know where it's going to be. And then this is something that I might do later when it's more dry, is to put the precise to get the eyes in better. Okay, now that's the beginning of that. I'm going to go back now to that. Nope, this is good. This will work. Get the rest of this horse more painted in. We've got some dark in that brush. I'd forgotten I had that much dark, but that's not going to hurt. Get it over here on his rump. Fill that in. I'm going to keep that little triangle there and change the color just because I like that design. It's good and it's an idea. I, I wouldn't have thought to draw that, but that was when I was doing that extra motion lines and I sort of like the look of it, so I'm going to keep it. Bring the rump around here, fill this in. This brush is such a long soft one, it's not quite working like that other one, so I might have to tw switch back to be able to lay the paint in better because this is flipping it around too much. So we'll come back to that as soon as I get this paint off. Put the brush in there. Here's my flat brush. And the color is dark. Yeah, okay. Get rid of that. Keep lots of rags around and just remember which part has the paint on it or else you'll have paint um, as they say from one end to the other. Um, and oil paint of course it does come off but it's you have to use paint thinner so it's not the best for your skin and, and nails and all. Okay now let's just do a little tilt here. I'm going to get this Oh, that is the same color. Okay, that's okay. We'll put this one over here now because I want this to change a wee bit in here. If that goes that way. Now, I don't have to save those internal lines there, but I, I could if I want. Um, I'm going to thin this thick line down by painting into it a bit so it's not quite so definite there. And his back along here, I want that a wee bit lighter up there. So I'll leave a space, space for that. Scrub this in a little. So I mentioned laying the paint on. There's also this business of scrubbing it. I'm going to use some of this nice reddish brown in here. It's very warm. It's got the uh, alizarin crimson in it and a bit of that red. And it just gives a nice interest from the brown to the, that reddish brown. I'm going to put a tint of that along his back here, just under this line and have it, and maybe it'll be that little section that I sort of liked having that little shape there. So um, 
these things kind of come to you, as I said, by having, uh, sometimes it's neat to paint over an old painting and not completely cover up the old painting and you'll get these little accidents and say, oh, I like seeing that, I'm gonna leave that in the picture. So um, don't be afraid, like I said, to experiment. Um, I like to, sometimes it's like a little gift, something happens and you say, oh, I hadn't planned that, but it's working. So it's kind of fun to use that. Get this finished here. Now I got enough paint and this brush is different from that other one I was just using. It, it's a flatter, more uh, easy to just, as I said, lay in the paint. So I'm going to put this part of his leg down here, a little darker um, and a bit here. I want some dark up here under this leg. Get, there we go. And I think not the same color all the way down. I'm going to come back to some of these colors now. Um, I'll use up a tiny bit of this and just do get it off my brush for this fella's uh, chest over here and some of this leg. Um, let's see. And then um, what I also do is start about now using these colors in the background. Um, some of this just as a way I was doing down there, but just to get some of it there in, so I'm not working on an empty, just nothing in the background. And if I don't like it, a couple days it's dry enough, I can paint it right out completely and change it. So it might not stay, but I, for now, don't mind that. Want this as atmosphere rather than as a background of, um, it's not Cypress Hills or anything, it's just atmosphere. <laughs> okay, we got to get uh, going here and finish one horse at least, and then we can go to the next. Okay, highlight. With oils, it doesn't so much matter whether you go light to dark or dark to light because they're, um, you can paint over as I did there. I put the light on top of the dark. I'm going to do it again here just because I'd like a little bit of highlight here. Um, with watercolors, you pretty much have to put, you put your darks in and leave your white spaces where you're going to have light stuff because you can't go back and lighten it after it's dark. But this one you can, and I, I want this, there's a little smidge there, I'm just going to blend it with my finger because that's easier than with my brush, um, just to get that so it wasn't a sharp edge there. I want that smoother. Okay, because there's more paint thinner in it than I thought. So it gives it a different look. Okay, shoulder is definitely going to have this color. We want this chunk here. And I might keep that blue line. I'm going to fill it in and see. If I don't like it, I can take it out after. That little shape that I had drawn in earlier. There we go. Fill that in. Okay. We're starting to get, and yeah, I think we want more of this actually, because those are going to be the, the highlight, the lights hitting there. Okay, and along the top of his leg, it would hit this part. And that's very yellow, so just so it isn't too shocking, we'll put a bit more up here. There. And maybe a bit more here. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, you know, really standing out there and contrast to that. So we're going to get a middle tone now to tone it back down in here. That's that in between. Get this so I can get it steady. Okay, there, and I can put, like I said, I've got, uh, there's a little dark in it because I picked up some dark from that, but I can lay this back over with that paint and just, you don't rub it then, you just set it on top of it. And as soon as I start to blend it or slide my brush, do this stroking, it, you get the, it starts to mix on your brush. Okay, we got that there, 
little bend in his leg. That's a bit thick, that leg. I might have to, that part's a bit thicker than I'd like it, but it's not too bad. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Get this in, down to hoof. And this shouldn't go too light, but I'll have a different color in there. So what I'm gonna do is take what I've got here on this part and this reddish brown, try and get a middle shade that's in between, and I think that might be it. Yeah. Okay, that works. These shapes follow the form of the horse. Um, they're not totally random. They um, follow the, like the, the roundness or the muscle structure, and that's so I can leave these odd lines in it, but um, I'm not just sort of doing a pattern on it. And now this chunk is th this part of the thigh. Um, I'll use that color again, I think works best in that position. And we'll go down here. Let's see, we're gonna get this horse finished if we can and start the next one. Fill that bit in there and down to here. And again, I don't mind that being, we can let that sort of blend that other color right up into there. And I'm gonna use that touch, just a touch black darker for here. And we get that in there. There we go. Um, like I said, the canvas is nice. It kind of bounces along so it feels alive. And uh, I think that's why I like oil paint. It has such a, a great texture. And uh, then you're working on um, the canvas, which kind of moves a bit. So it's not like a hard edge. This leg's a little too thick too for what I'd like, so I might correct it. Get, when I do the background, I can take some of that thickness out. We'll just get some color on his hooves. Okay, now that's a kind of, I want to use the, some blue here, because the blue is going to be that other horse. Whoopsie, there's what you don't want to do, is you pick that up net. If you don't get that off your finger now, it goes on to about 43 other places before you notice it. Um, then it's all over your car and your house, your friends' places and everything. <laughs> So, let's see if we've got this now. I'm gonna make some couple of blues. I've got a light blue here. Oops, and I've still got too much color on there, which will make that a kind of a neat neutral, which I might like. We'll see. No, nah, not, not. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. I want those richer, darker blues, so take the rag again. I always try to fold it in like that if I've used it and see there I didn't so we're getting some more paint. Fold it over and then we have like that so you put the, the paint inside. Okay now the blue. Here's the blue and I want to get it like I said just a bit a couple of shades so I can do this horse with the way I did this with these different values in the blue range kind of. Um, that's going to be a nice rich dark and I'll put a little bit lighter. Okay, so we got that one. We're going to go this one in between, lighter. I'll start with that and then I can use the darker, I can always get darker. Uh, and the witch brush is going to go here, this little guy for now. Oh, not that one. I had another one that's just right here. This one. Wet it in the paint thinner. Use up the paint that's, and see if it's clean. Use this paint thinner, or the paint that I mixed on the palette. So I'm gonna do something like that here. I want the, actually the darker color. So I'm gonna tip it into this, this was my dark, and just do this shadow right off the bat. This is gonna be a little darker yet for that part of the neck that's under. And I'm gonna leave that nice bright blue outline. And then we'll come in here. There we go. 
and this shadow here, we'll put that in. We can get a leg underneath it. And a little bit more here. Get a nice line coming across his shoulder and here. And this. Okay. Your brush um, makes a lot of difference. Because if, if they get too stubby and um, they, they won't do these corners and little finer lines and you, you just find that you're kind of fighting, it's like using a stump or something. So um, do take care of the brushes. Clean them well after each use. At least leave them sitting in the paint thinner. Sometimes I do that till the next day and then I can get to them and clean them properly. Okay, now there's a touch of light, a very pure, that almost cerulean blue there against that dark that I like. So I'm going to come back and use that idea now. I like that. And um, then I, I'll keep going with the picture. This one's going to come back to being, these will be the blue, this will be sort of the blue horse. This is going to be a bit more in the browns, maybe not so much of the yellow. This one could end up with a bit more of this yellow. I might work it there because he looks sort of like two-toned, a little more than I want. Um, but this one will go into these reddish brown and um, raw sienna tones. And then the sky in the background is going to have similar colors but in different shapes and degrees. And we'll just keep playing with what I've got mixed here. So let's get this part of his neck in. So that's that lovely um, cerulean blue that is, um, it can go very bright and beautiful. And then there's the, the cobalt, um, which is also rich, lovely. And I just push that in. Now sometimes, and I'm gonna do that here, um, just to show how neat it looks to have a little bit of this drip. Um, it doesn't have to be all solidly painted. It's like this w was wet and dripped. So if I put that there, put this bright blue on his back and let it kind of drip down. Um, that can be, I'm going to bring it further down, but I might just leave some of the, the horses even with this thinner, it's called a wash, just like in watercolor you can do a wash, but in oils you can sort of let it drip. So I have to just put a tad of the thinner and that'll let it run down. And sometimes it can ruin something <laughs> or sometimes it can work. So I'll get that little rag again, just in case it keeps going down. But I want just a bit of a, a um, thinner look. Kind of, it just gives you, it looks like light sort of coming, um, shining on there if I, if I can get that washed to be not too dark. So um, I'm just, I'm gonna progress with that. I would finish up the blues on this horse. My, my different values are here and he, of the same hue, but different values. And I'll work it through here, but I do want a bit more of these motion lines. And they, this will be a very abstracted uh, background without anything very well defined. So um, I've enjoyed doing this and there's lots of art going on in this city. It's wonderful. Private artists with their own studios like this and Art Club, the Hat Art Club is out at the Cultural Center. There's another group called the Strathcona Art Club, which is great. And you can check with almost any artist that you can meet and they would help you find um, or connect to some form of either art lesson or art studio. So I hope you can enjoy that. Keep mixing colors, keep using the brush and mix your paints, get a good palette and let's paint. <laughs>